Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conservative Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith, and today we had a, a great conversation with uh, Larry uh, and Andrea and Nicolai, who discussed topics of mental health and clinical psychology and uh, voter election integrity. So uh, some of these uh, topics are reoccurring topics at Conservative Coffee Hour, and Andrea, who I was reminded is indeed studying to be a trained clinical psychologist <laughs> reminded us again that um you know early childhood development children grow up and they watch their parents and watch their peers and watch uh general culture and society around them and how they perform and from that they learn and take cues about uh what is acceptable quote unquote acceptable behavior and social norms that uh serve, probably will serve themselves and we know it serves society best and uh, this really forms the underlying basis for um, an environment which is conducive to mental health. We all are on the spectrum at some point of varying degrees of mental health. Andrea suggested that we check in with ourselves and ask daily, what is our mental health status? She did take a leap and say we could ask other people, uh, you know, instead of saying, how's your day going? How is your mental health status? Um, you know, it's a way to raise awareness of the topic, and it uh, could be a conversation starter. It could, it could be a conversation ender, but so is mentioning that you tend to lean conservative. Um, and in that regard, I brought up the topic that in today's client, client, uh, climate, we really um, we don't seem to have an open dialogue between conservative ideals and liberal ideals. And I've mentioned before that we should be able to have a conversation about both. We should be able to uh, appreciate and preserve conservative traditional values and look at uh, liberal liberal values and problem solving for some of social uh, society's social ills. Uh, when children and young people and society in general see our leaders bickering and fighting and really showing strong <laughs> dislike for each other, um, that really is not conducive to uh, a healthy nurturing environment for, for mental health or even our physical health. Last Sunday at the Washington National Cathedral, Dana Casello in her sermon mentioned that the only thing holding this country together anymore is our mutual acrimony for each other. And that that's a, um, a pretty sad state of affairs. Andrea, who is a, I think she's finishing up her doctorate degree at the, in Texas at the university, mentioned that a lot of her colleagues really would like to see her leave, <laughs> exit the program, and uh, and leave the university because she really doesn't seem to meld so much with the more liberal leaning uh, faculty. And I asked uh, her to ponder the idea of how would their lives be better? Would they be, uh, how would their lives be improved? And how would that benefit them if they if she left? And I suggested she ask them that, like how how would they be empowered and how would they be different? Would they be more amazing, dynamic individuals? Are they really being impeded by one person on campus with different viewpoint, a conservative viewpoint? And uh, I think we can look at history and, and see that when groups identify another group as being uh, problematic and impinging upon their well-being and their existence, this has very negative outcomes. And that's not what we're looking for. We are very happy to uh, see Larry at the uh, coffee hour because he had a couple different issues to contend with this week. And I really appreciate Cheryl from Springfield who asked uh, Larry about the recent uh, news coverage about his uh, run in with the people looking into this uh, January 6th event, and how they had identified uh, Larry and associated him with the January 6th event by facial recognition technology, because Larry was recently featured in a photograph with gubernatorial candidate Darren Bailey. And from that, um, they were able to track him down and identify him and match him with footage from that event. And I, I really appreciated Cheryl sharing this story, and I thought it was a good story and good reporting, because it's a good example of story of the story. The story of that story is Big Brother is surveilling all of us. And I appreciate people who are lawbreakers being uh, tracked down and apprehended. But I mean, really, <laughs> I live in downtown Chicago. And 
can take a stroll up down Oak Street out my window or Michigan Avenue and <laughs> you don't need uh, video surveillance. Like you can see the looters running through the street and people perpetrating crime. And I don't quite know why they need to, to track down a member of um, uh, a guest at conservative coffee hour. Uh, I don't know if that's a good use of our time or resources, but others might argue and see it differently. And I do appreciate that. Um, if you would like to attend Conservative Coffee Hour, I will put my uh, email address in the description, and I would be happy to invite you, and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.